Yeah. So, disclaimer, we are recording this meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm dropping some people in. Um, Andy is here. Okay, so I'm gonna drop the meeting minutes into the chat. There you go, everybody. So just, um, I kind of have a, a light agenda for today. And this is our monthly meeting, so we do have an agenda. I know we kind of always have an agenda, but um, the first one is everybody, you can pat yourself on the back. <laughs> the metrics version one releases is out. Um, Georg, do you, could you talk just real quickly about the kind of the process that you went through? You had mentioned so, it in the email, but maybe. Yeah, one of the goals I still have is to document it in our handbook. Okay. Emerging, but just to give an overview, let, let me share my screen because a few things may become more clear um, if you just see it. And a lot of the work was really done by Kevin and I just assisted with some of the technicalities. The website itself, let's start here, is a WordPress website, as you all know, pulling in uh, markdown files from GitHub. And what we've done is this page here sits in the website repository. But when we go to specific metrics, these are metrics that are pulled straight from the working group repositories. Right. I'll tell you what that looks like. So when we go to, let's say, diversity and inclusion repository, the new thing that we did not have before is a release. So here at the top of every repository, there's now one release. And this release is a tag. I put in information that what metrics are included in the release. There is a frozen version of the repository that we can download. And we can also just go to the commit if we ever want to go back to um, the version that is released. And that is the version that is pulled into the website. So it's a static uh, frozen in time snapshot of the repository that is the release now. Okay. And this is the same across all working groups. So if I go to, uh, let's say, risk, we see in the risk repository the same release. And it's always release year month, uh, which is something that the governing board had decided to have release versions based on the date. So that's how we implemented it. Okay. And so. Hold on, I'm just jotting down. Um, so obviously, just every work group can uh, can continue to work in their their master branch as right. they're building or even modifying some of these released metrics without seeing an impact on the web page. Correct. Okay. Yes. And so yeah, the other thing if you when you go to the code. Yep. You have uh, branches, obviously, the master branch, or you can go to tags here, and then you get the release version. I see. Okay. And you cannot work inside of a tag because it's just a snapshot. So you would have to go back to a branch to work. Okay. I mean, the reality is nobody would work in that anyway. We would just always tag these, or nobody would want to work in those anyway. Exactly. Okay. And so inside the website repository, just as background information, we have Kevin created this release folder. And inside the release folder, we have the version. And from there, we can service the website. Okay. And one of the things that I also added, it still needs to be merged, is a PDF version. Yeah, I thought that was a good idea. Yep. 
because then we can include a download of all of the previous versions and have on the website only the most recent one as uh, uh, as HTML and all the old ones we just provide the PDF for. Okay, cool. That is merged, uh, by the way. Oh, you merged it and you put it on the website? Uh, I just merged it. It's uh, okay. So just now. Excellent. One thing that here's a new markdown file that I added. Download the least PDF. Um, which I think we can add as a new module at the bottom of the metrics page here. So that when you're here, all the way at the bottom, you can download the PDF. And that's where we collect all the PDFs from all the versions. Could you put it up above? Do you we like it also, down there? We can also put it here in between. That's what I was thinking. Either. It, yeah, OK. I guess I'm not that particular about that. OK. That's really great. That was a good idea. All right, cool. Um, so Kevin, now that you're on, a huge thank you for, for keeping this organized <laughs> and, and as seen on the web page. This was a ton of work over the course of many months, I know. So thank you for that. Welcome. I bet you're glad it's done. Oh, a little bit. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm already starting to worry about the next release. <laughs> You're supposed to give yourself it. It only got released today. You at least get this evening to not worry about those things. <laughs> um, great. And then uh, a couple questions. One, Gary, you had mentioned being in line with the governance document. Was there anything that was kind of lingering or did it all look pretty good? No, it was all process. good. Okay. I think uh, as we built the release over the last couple of months, we stayed in line with what we had decided in the governing board meeting. Okay. On 15, and I just double checked, made sure that we were still on target with what we wanted to accomplish. Okay. I'm thinking um, for the board meeting in San Diego, we should probably put this on as an agenda item, specifically aligned with what came from the last board meeting as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. All right, great. Um, do any people have questions or comments on this that are on the on the line? No. So personally, <laughs> big thanks to everybody again. Um, this is, I think, this is a fairly large milestone because um, it gives us something to point to, uh, and it gives us. A, it gives us, from a metrics perspective, kind of our, our first round of, of metrics to talk about. I think it was a big win. I think for a long time, we had a lot of metrics just kind of floating around. You know, we had that huge metrics table. And um, it was difficult to kind of pin any of those metrics down into these working groups. And I think this does, does just that. So my hope is this, this helps the conversation quite a bit. I just shared my screen again. I wanted to show one thing. Yeah. Last night, as I was putting this together, I was thinking we should also have a list of contributors. Ooh, I totally agree. I, that was on my to-do. <laughs> yeah, it, I spent some time yesterday pulling together all of the people who committed, um, were on the mailing list. I did not include everyone. So there was like a cut up if you sent less than two emails on the main list, I didn't include you. Um, or if you only have one or two commits, I might have not included someone. Uh, but I made sure everyone who I recognized from the meetings and from the conversations was in here. That's great. Can we, you know, SPDX for their spec, they include this on the web page? I what do, do have it in the website repository. So. I would like to put that up on the web page as well, not just the PDF. I mean, thank you for doing that because that's a great idea. So yeah, inside the release, I added a contributors MD. Oh, okay. And that is the whole list. 
it doesn't look great when you see it like this, but when you see it raw, it's uh, the list. Actually, the list you showed before, like on the prior page there, that's just what the SPDX looks like. It's just a big giant block. Yeah. You know, it's not pretty. <laughs> oh, there, oh, I see there's no commas. <laughs> so you don't actually know anybody's name. Um, okay. So Kev, is, is the idea to get this on the page that has the metrics on it? Or is it just a different markdown file that would, if you wanted to click on it and observe it, you could? I don't know what uh, everyone's opinion is. I don't have a preference. OK. So the, the question that I'm posing is, Georg, thank you, took the time to identify the chaos contributors who participated on this version one release. And we could show this list just as its own markdown page. So you would just click like, see contributors, and then it'll take you to the markdown. Or we could just include this list on that. That Can you bring that other page up, Georg? Just the main metrics page while you're, yeah, that one. Or we could include the names just directly on this page. Do people have thoughts? I'm happy including it. Kind of like the page all the way at the yeah. bottom. Sorry, Kevin, I was talking over you. Um, sorry, or or I was talking over you. <laughs> uh, I, I like the way it's displayed in the PDF. So uh, I guess if if we were to display it in a similar way, it would be uh, towards the top. Okay. But on this page, that there seem to be two votes for this page, not on its own markdown page. Right, right, on the release. Yeah, I agree. So I, have, I think on the release page is good. I also think we should include the governing board as it consisted at the time of release. Yep. But I would not get it in the way of people looking at the metrics. I would put it at the bottom of the page. Okay. I'm okay yeah, with that. That's fair. Yep. Um, anybody else have thoughts on that? Well, okay. Um, all right, that'd be great. Um, I don't know how much work that would be, Kevin, just to include that. Not very much. Okay. Couldn't have it done today. Okay. Um, uh, include list of all contributors, right? As well as board members. Okay, good, thank you. I think uh, as far as board members are concerned, we could just link to the uh, the board member page. We could, I think Georg's comment was he wanted to identify board members at the release. I think that's how I understood you, Georg. And if we link to the page, that might change. Is that me? No, oh, sorry, that was my phone. Okay, we all have the same noises. I don't <laughs> when they just come out of my computer speakers. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, Gary, was that your thought that you wanted to kind of free the board members at the? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll create a pull request to get this on the same document, and then uh, Kevin can just create a new module and pull in this markdown file. Perfect. Cool, thank you. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do, also this came up I think last week, was now that we have a metrics release, start thinking about how these metrics are deployed and trying to identify where they live in the world. And I know we do that via the reference implementations or the sample implementations in the metric themselves, metrics themselves. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. Let's see. You all have that OK? Yep, I can see it. OK. Super rough, super rough mockups here, right? So one of the ideas here is 
we could take it from the approach of working group by working group. And there may be other options as well that people have on their mind. Um, we would identify the metrics of that working group, which would, so risk currently has, I don't know, four or five metrics. So it would be one, two, three, four, five right through here. Um, and then where those metrics are currently deployed. So whether we know it's deployed in Augur or Grimoire Lab or even perhaps um, systems kind of outside of the Chaos Project, like GitLab is, I'm totally making that up, but say GitLab is deploying the metric uh, as defined by Chaos. Uh, um, we can do the same for, say, DNI, metric one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whether it's deployed as part of an OpenStack report or it's deployed as part of a badging program or the other thought was to actually put software first, you know, so we have Augur Grimoire Lab and then say GitLab and a badging program, whatever those, those potential, um, another could be Kibble, whatever those deployments might be and talk about or uh, highlight the metrics that they support inside of those pieces of software. See what I'm saying? So one is kind of working group first, the other is software first. And maybe there's a third option here. Anybody have any thoughts on this? So I am, I really like the idea of um, providing a working group and metric first approach okay. from chaos perspective, because I assume that the individual um, projects will have their own list of what metrics they support. Okay. So we don't have to duplicate that. Okay. The value that chaos can provide is that metric first approach. Okay. Kind of this number one right here. Yes. Okay. Um, other thoughts? Yeah, I would go for the first option as well, because okay. I guess it sounds to me like a bit more easy to maintain. Uh, okay. and, and the reason for this is, well, at least in the case of Grimoire Lab, like the list of metrics is depends on the number of fields that we have in each of the indexes. Okay. And that means that we can have something like 30 different indexes with uh, 50 different fields. So those are the total number of metrics you can have, which is like okay. too many. Yep. Okay. So it sounds to me like a bit too much. So if we want this, the, this would be too much. I think so. At least from a Grimoire Lab perspective. Now this would only be the, it wouldn't be the entirety of the metrics that Grimoire Lab supports. It would only be the identification of the yeah. version one released metrics. But the then, uh, then I may still go for the first option because the second option sounds to me like, nah, these are the metrics supported by Grimoire Lab or Augur while maybe there are others for sure. Okay. So this way it's like, well, and you can see this here. Okay. I know. No, no, that's not, I, I think I agree with you because I put that one first anyway. That was the first slide I made. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I apparently have a bias. Um, any other thoughts on this? Okay, I'm gonna start kind of moving this forward. Um, I'd like to get it on the web page. I think we had talked about in the metrics repository. Was that right from last week? As a potential landing spot for something like this. Um, uh, it might end up going above the release or uh, create a new tab in the metrics uh, uh, navigation. Oh, yeah, that's possible. I, I think like the idea of a new tab. Yeah, I do too. I don't want to over clutter the, like we, as of today, we added the list of like the link to the PDF and the contributors and board members, which are all great additions, but I don't want to make it too much <laughs> that is this ginormous document so a tab would be great okay so okay cool um i'll put that on my to-do list i'm gonna stop sharing my screen all right um did anybody jot that down no software updates um, include um table
uh, with what? What should I call these? Um, software. I don't know. I'll figure that out. Anyway. Uh, okay, great. And I think this this could also, from my perspective, kind of serve as a way that, like in DNI, we talk about Daniel, you talk about say the OpenStack report about how some of these metrics are being used, perhaps, as part of the back world. Um, I think I've, uh, can, can you say again? Because I, yeah, sure. Some... I think oh. a, a table like this could be helpful mm -hmm. just for continuing to capture the conversation around, say, the OpenStack report. So if the OpenStack report or if OpenStack does another report and they're using some of the chaos metrics, it's just a nice way to, to kind of capture that in a single location. Yeah, yeah. Well, in the case of the so an example, and this is a good example. What uh, I've been doing with Nicole from time to time is like so we have all of these metrics related related to DNI. Yep. So, but in this case, what we did was to directly go to uh, so to open this discussion to go to the focus areas. Yep. The other way around, which is based on on the table we have, point to the specific cases of the OpenStack gender report. Yep. It's doable. Yes, so mapping one way or the other. I think it's a, this would be a nice central place to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Great. Um, okay, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about a little bit today was, I think we've, in the last year, we've spent a lot of time on getting the metrics release out. And you can see from that list of people that Gary put together, there are a lot of people that contributed over the last year. Um, so I, one of the things I'd like to do this year is start talking a bit more in these meetings about the software. So I had reached out to folks from Grimoire Lab and from Augur just to give us an overview of kind of what the state of the art is on in the software, you know, kind of what the future plans are. Um, so if, if either of you want to give a talk, Sean, I'm pretty sure you're still on. I'm here. I, I actually uh, had a little bit of an internet problem, so I switched computers. <laughs> no. uh, or Daniel slash Georg, representing the Grimoire Lab side, or we can we can postpone this for next week. We, to have a talk. I, we can talk about it uh, now. Mm -hmm. or we can talk about it again next week. <laughs> it's, it's how it's how prepared. Yeah, we could, yeah, exactly. It'd be great if we can talk about it maybe more regularly and and see the interfaces and see how. I just see the work you're doing, whether it's with Google Summer of Code or with um, the metrics. Now that we have a version release, how are these two things connecting? So, Georg, it looks like you're up first. Yeah, I I just jumped the gun and started sharing. Thank so you. The. The one thing that I want to highlight is that when you go to chaos.beturge.io, there is a live instance of Remote Lab for anyone to play with and for seeing what the software can currently do using the data from our own community. So it's a really nice playground. Um, it's been around for a while. Jesus uh, has mentioned it several times. So the nice thing here is we have these panels, is what uh, Grimoire Lab calls them, or predetermined dashboards that we can access from the menu at the top. And this is where uh, we have a panel collection for metrics, like lines of code is a metric that we have released. And so Grimoire Lab has a way to show different visualizations um, and have a description at the bottom for the released metrics. We can then, of course, go in here and filter set tags. Uh, let's say we want to only look at the Augur project. We can dynamically filter. This is one of the great features of Grimoire Lab that we can drill down in the data and create visualizations on the fly. Or we can say we want to exclude from Augur and see the rest of the project. So that's really something um, we are, that is available to the community for anyone to play with. 
one of the new things that we have been working on lately is a uh, new dashboard here for Uber with the GitHub um, popularity metrics, like number of forks, number of stars, subscribers. That's one of the newer things we have um, with regards to Garrett as a platform for, an for analyzing code reviews in open source projects. We have a uh, fairly new overview of how are the reviews going and we can look by reviewer, what types of reviews do they typically give. Um, so we can see here minus two, is there a reviewer that is constantly shutting down others and apparently not, so that's good or also by contributor. Is there a contributor that has a high number of rejections compared to other contributors? And then we can see, hey, there might be a contributor that we want to focus on. So those are things we've been working on. One last one. So wait, what, um, it, so I have, so what that last, I have a couple of questions, but this, yeah. what we're looking at here, this is taking a look at the, participants in the project and their activity on OPNFV, sounds like. Yes. And is the, is the takeaway that this can pull from different data sources or is the takeaway that you can take a look at people? What is the, the kind of the new work here? Uh, this the, one is specifically highlight? for Garrett. Okay. Project that use Garrett as their code review platform. So instead of using pull requests, they use Garrett to manage changes to their code base. So is Garrett, is this a new data source for Grimoire Lab? It's one it... that we've supported for a while, but there are new ways that we visualize right. data for customers. So um, what, what it's called in, in Garrett are the, the approvals. Okay. So, in the code review process. So in the same way that in GitHub, we are asking each other to, hey, do you mind adding this? So in Gary, they have to add like a specific vote and they have this minus two, I see. Uh, which is basically forget about this. Uh, minus one, which is, would you mind to add some uh, specific improvements to the thing? Plus one, which is typically, it's okay for me, but I would like to have other reviewers have a look. And then plus two, that means, I'm a core reviewer, so this can go ahead and go for this. So then you can compare the different approvals for each of the uh, projects, repositories, and developers. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, cool. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. One thing that we're also working on is integrating different data sources to be able to create visualizations that have data from uh, here, in this case, Garrett, Jira, and Wiki, and create one visualization because typically we have that separated in Grimoire Lab. So bringing the different data sources together is one thing we work on. Um, I want to show another cool feature that has... Uh, hey, could I ask you a question really yeah. fast, too? So on that first tab that you showed, it had the panels was that right not that one no no yeah. <laughs> no you yeah, those um and then if you clicked on say like activity lines so like pull requests merged i'll just pick on that one so i know that that's a that was a um metric I think this is a metric that is in release one from evolution. Evolution. Code development. Reviews accepted. accepted. Yep. Pull requests merged. Yeah. So is there, so if you go back to the, um, the Grimoire lab. I just wanted to open this and you might recognize this visualization. Okay. From the metric in here. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, so these are the same. So, um, is there any, um, is there any utility? And the answer can be a hundred percent. No. Um, Grimoire lab slash Petergia's perspective indicate that this is a 
chaos published metric. For so a that, chaos metric as part of version one. You see what I'm saying? On yeah. this. So I, I agree. Yes, that would be nice. And uh, Daniel, can I spill the beans on what our plans is for September? Oh, go ahead. So starting September. It's a secret. Well, it's being recorded, so it's not a secret. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so starting September, we want to uh, meet the hour before we have the weekly meetings. Okay. Uh, and have um, one hour to um, walk through the metrics, implement the metrics, uh, see how we can play with the metrics in Green Wall Lab. Okay. So I think now that we have the metrics and you put it nicely, we can now focus on the software and how it's working in the software. So have a, basically an office hour every Tuesday before the weekly call. Okay. And that's where we would then develop these uh, panels so that they are part of the chaos community. Oh, okay. That would, be, that would be amazing because then that starts to give visibility not just from the chaos web page, but also it, it stitches things together on both sides, mm. if that makes sense. Like mm. um, the chaos metrics clearly point to Grimoire Lab and then if the pointing goes the other way, that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. If I heard you correctly, so yeah, the, the goal. Oh, go ahead. No, finish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, then 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 I go. Uh, so the goal with this is, uh, well, you know, to bring more Ethereans and Grimoire Lab developers to to discussion of the dashboards and how uh -huh. this can be created. Um, and for this, the idea is to start with, uh, let's say simple things as, uh, I don't know, for instance, we are going to have like, my, just imagine the first day discussion about organizational diversity and how this is implemented in Grimoire Lab or okay. how this can be implemented in Grimoire Lab. Yeah. So then, uh, we can have specific, uh, uh, discussion on the panel, what we have, and then we can bring specific people from other working groups to say, this is what we mean by organizational diversity, but then we have the evolution working group and others. Yep. Um, yeah, and I, I would say this, this is useful because then we will show and teach others how to create their own thing. Yep. And in second case, we can start creating use cases and documentation for the community, which is good. And I do have a question here that might be interesting to have for the board uh, session that you uh, discuss yourselves. And it's, we are, our plan is to use chaos data, but according to GDPR, we need to announce this to the community and so on. So what do you think as part of the board that we are using this data for these kind of things, for these kind of public things? This is out of my world. Sean might have some thoughts on GDPR. I don't see any individually identifying information in here. Is there yeah, an email somewhere? Yeah. Not here, but in other panels, there are probably no or it happens the same. So if we are going to use this in a public way, like recording the information, pro at least, and as far as, I know, as far as I know, we have to first let the community know, and second, have a specific uh, way to remove information if some specific member of the community requests that. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a GDPR expert, but all of I know all what I know about the GDPR is that it's about sharing um, digital information on the internet. Mm -hmm. so I suppose your concern is that it's going to be videotaped and the video is going to be on the internet, right? Or, mm -hmm. or that these are public, these are public facing dashboards. Yeah. Um, and people may start producing things on that dashboard because we give access to them because yeah. we want well, them to you. I think this is an, I mean, I would, I, maybe we need to get consent, but this is a focused community where everyone understands the intent. I, I think I think probably covering yourselves would simply involve probably the community and not just Patergia, but the community should say, look, you know, we're doing some software demos and we're using the data from the GitHub chaos repositories to mm -hmm. illustrate how our tools work. 
are you okay with your email address being used? And if someone responds that they're not, then we just obfuscate that identity with the fake identity for that person, which I'm sure for you with sorting hat and for us with our mapping table is like super easy. We just change the canonical email to, hmm. you know, Joe at Bob.com. <laughs> it's done. Hmm. I, mean, um, mm -hmm. I don't live in Europe, so, you know, I don't have as much of a gun to my head, but I think, uh, I, I think the spirit of the, that accomplishes the spirit of the regulation, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, Don, you know, Daniel, uh, Don Marty, who's on the board, mm -hmm. he might also have some insights. He seems to, Sean, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but seems to have an interest in this area. Yeah, he and, does. There, there's also an explicit GitHub exception in the GDPR. I don't know if you're aware of that. Nope. Yeah, there's an explicit GD, there's a, Don and I were talking about this and, GitHub commit data is explicitly not part of it. And that was something the software industry negotiated because as a practical matter, if we removed all identifying information from Git commit logs, we would literally be unable to do a thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's, it would completely destroy open source software if we were, had to do that. So I know at least from a deletion perspective, Git, Git repositories and GitHub in particular, hmm. in general, and more specifically, but Git in general has an, has a, and I'd have to look it up. But Don and I were talking, and he mentioned there's an explicit exception for this kind of work, simply because of the catastrophic effect it would have on open source software. But okay. we should ask Don to make sure I'm remembering that right. Uh, in any case, I would like that you discuss in the uh, if if it's possible in the board okay. session sure. about having specific warning like. Hey, in this community, we are having public data. We are using we we are using we are having a fair use of the of this because it's attribution of your work. Uh, this this data might be used in some public use cases as when having you know Bogor or Grimoire Lab uh, public use cases. Mm -hmm. So even if you disagree with this, but you want to participate in chaos, please let us know so we can obfuscate you in somehow. So having that warning, I think it's. Yeah, it's, and it's and it's really just a notification. I mean, I think there's a, I think there's almost an assumption upon in, in the minds of, I mean, I have an assumption that I'm not going to have any privacy related to things I contribute to chaos. It's a public repository. All that data is already there. So maybe we can put together one email, send it to the mailing list once it's in the archive, and secondly, put it on our participate page, a disclaimer saying, hey, there is this um, chaos.bechurch.io page where your data is used. Uh, let us know if that's not okay, and we do the same if there's a public auger instance. Mm -hmm. so we, might try to, uh, we might try to identify some of the other ways that their data might be used as well. So we, we can use a we can use that space for the disclaimer that these calls are recorded as well. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yes, exactly. Can we also make it clear before anyone start contributing or joining a community? And so upfront, they already know their responsibility. Like in the case that Sean yeah. was talking about. I think that's what, Gabe, I think that's what um, Georg just said. They okay. put it on the sign up list. Yeah. Also put it in the Sorry to interrupt you, Armstrong. <laughs> okay. Then instead of us creating fake email addresses, like that name fake sometimes might be interpreted negatively. We can use some kind of anonymous email address so that if, let's say, someone from the uh, mining software repository falls to in those kind of cases, instead of struggling to make sense out of those kind of things, they should see some kind of consistency. For example, like a mask at email address, they should know that this email address have been masked. Mm -hmm. So we we can now give some consistent way of identifying that at least we should uh, really like not Armstrong that it should not be on us to anonymize people on the internet. If they want to stay anonymous, then you just have to let them know if you want to be here and stay anonymous, it's up to you to do that. Now, I was talking in the case where, like, um, someone was talking about how we can create fake email addresses. 
Yeah, but the ones who want to stay anonymous can create those. So I have a question for clarification. Uh, is all this data available already and we're just pulling it out? Just making sure. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So, so if we're if we're working with this data, I feel like a lot of GDPR is focused around actually having the data available in the first place. So, if you put it in a different format, that's not changing how the data can be viewed, or it, it changes how it can be viewed, but it doesn't change the, the availability of the data itself. And I think that's what they're most concerned with. Mm -hmm. GDPR so, also covers processing of data and collecting data from uh, sources. So. Just because it's public doesn't mean you have the right to process it. Yeah, I, I know that too. I was thinking more about the um, the displaying of the data um, after we've processed it and things like that. As long as we follow GDPR in the processing of the data, I think it's fair to just have people ask if they wanted it taken away. So there was a good question. Yeah, good question from John. If the LF has GDPR counsel and um, I suspect they do. Um, why don't I put that on as an action item for myself? I'll reach out to Mike Dolan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perhaps, if that would be, yeah, good. Yeah, perhaps the, the way we can proceed and probably the easiest way is to have a CLA for newcomers. And then in the CLA we say, we are gonna do this. If you agree, that's okay. Okay. That might be something to discuss at the board as well. Well, I could even, um, or well, if Mike is a person to talk yeah. to, I could invite him to one of our weekly calls, like next week, mm -hmm. or whomever that person might be at the LF, to so kind of walk us through this a little bit. What, like, like to your point, Daniel, like what might be the easiest things for us to do right out of the gate? So the way we are doing this with customers is our customers are mainly. Uh, data controllers are we are data producers. In this case, the community would be kind of the data controller, but we don't have that agreement in place. Okay. Um, so perhaps we ask Viterja or, 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 or any other one willing to produce say, certain data and have this public to others to play with, we can have this agreement in place. And then we can have a CLA signed by people contributing to the community. So, or at least I have a big warning, like, hey, we are doing this. And you are more than welcome to, to come and you are more than welcome to ask to remove yourself. Or Can you just like put that. a blanket CLA on a page? Is that okay? Oh, can you say again? Can you just put like a, a blanket CLA on a page? Like, um... Basically, we could, when they sign up for a mailing list or to join a repository or make a commit, we could make that part of the DCO or the consent that they give at the time of engaging. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Um, having this information either you decide at the board before the first session would be good. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I point, point very well taken, Daniel. I think this is something that Thank you very much. It's going to be a, of immediate concern. Thank you. We probably need to be <laughs> keeping on our rate as we build public faces this data across the world. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Sean, do you want to give us uh, kind of an update as to what's going on with, with Augur at the moment? Yeah, we have um, the full integration of DUSAC's data into the Augur database schema. So the, the principle, sorry? Can you tell us what DUSOX is? DUSOX is a license scanner that provides software bill of materials, file by file license information, and other kinds of things that can basically be scanned from the actual code itself. This will help us to provide risk metrics, basically. Um, we've also implemented um, let me see if I can find it here. We have a new front end, but uh, I didn't have enough notice to put a demo together. Okay. Here. So maybe next month at the monthly meeting, we can take some time to do a, a full demo of that. I think that the most exciting things about Augur are 
we've made it, I think, fairly easy for anyone to provide a list of repositories that have public URLs, or if you have private URLs, but a token-based authentication mechanism at the command line, you can also configure uh, the cloning of those to bring them into the Augur database automatically, and then begin, if they're GitHub repositories, you can begin pulling in any GitHub information, including uh, GitHub metadata, GitHub uh, pull requests, issues, all of the commentary about it. One of the really exciting things about Augur is that we have all of the messaging in one place. So if you want to understand the structure and nature of communication on a project, uh, there's one stop shopping for you to go, go to. Um, let me just do a share here really quick. Sure. This is not sexy panels, but this is an example of, or this is our, our current public API that anybody that installs and runs Augur will get. And from here you can see, so let's take a, an example of code changes. Most of the metrics, all the metrics in fact, can be pulled for summary data by a group of repositories that you define. So if you have 15 projects that you tend to look at together, you can look at all those projects together or if you have one repository that you're particularly concerned about, you can get that out of the API. And so for code changes, uh, you can see that we have uh, a fairly standard API structure. If it's a repo group, it's prefaced by repo group with the ID, which you get from a repo group ID call. And then uh, code changes, which is the name of the chaos metric. You can see that all of the chaos metrics including the ones that we've published, as well as the ones that are currently in progress. So any metric that chaos has defined, we have uh, a link to that chaos metric built into the API endpoint. And can this you, proof, sorry. Do you, know, do you know if those are pointing to the new release? That might be yep. something. They're not pointing to the web page. Uh, the web page might be the place to go. That would be great. You want to write that for us? You want to yeah, put a pull request? Totally do that. <laughs> Where so we're gonna where, we we where point to the GitHub. We, it points to the GitHub. I just popped it open. Okay. Uh, and we do this just because otherwise we would either only point to the published metrics, yep. or we would have a much more complicated programming endeavor to keep it up to date. It's been um and there's a good you know, hopefully our, our web pages or our GitHub pages stay reasonably consistent going they forward. Should, and a lot of We've certainly invested a lot as they've changed over time. Yeah. Um, so it would be nice if they were stable. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine like the, like what you're looking at here with code changes would yeah. fundamentally change. Some like reference implementation things might change or. As long as the URL stays the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. I, I um, sort of promise that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and we have this as well for the unpublished metrics. Okay. And, and this has proven pretty useful. So as we've gone through, I actually opened an issue last week working with a, an Augur user who went through our, our code changes uh, endpoint. And there's actually some ambiguity in the definition of code changes about whether or not a code change is a file change or a specific number of commits on a particular day. Okay. And, and, it says it. It's it's clear. It, it's it's clear in both cases in different parts of the metric definition. So, as we have people going through and and using these APIs for their own, and the advantage is a lot of organizations want to just build a front end using technologies or integrating it with things they already have. So by focusing on the endpoint um, right now, and also because I don't have a a, a working new version of the front end. Um, I have it working. It's just not working on my deployed server. It's working on our developer machines. Um, Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So is, when you're talking about the API endpoints, do you think that the focus of Augur is more along the lines of, of APIs or is it front ends or is it a little bit of both? So the, the architecture of Augur is we don't have a Percival in the sense that we don't have something that goes and gets everything and puts it in a, a neat single container uh, like Elasticsearch. What we have instead are a series of workers that are deployed with Augur uh -huh. that 
And those workers are defined to go after specific types of data and to put them in a structured relational database in a consistent way. So when we pull commits, um, well, we don't pull commits directly from anything, but when we pull pull requests or GitLab's equivalent, we have a worker that does each of those things okay. and it just pulls it from each, each service and the structure that it provides it and then maps it into our relational structure so that um, apples are compared to apples. Uh, in a sense, same with issues, same with any statistics about repositories. So we're keeping a, an ongoing record of the stars, the, the forks, watchers, sure. and things like that, uh, as well as contributors. So, so over time, we accumulate a set of data. When you when you run Augur, you start to accumulate these historical pieces of information. So I'd say, I mean, Augur's three parts: it's collecting the data, which in a, in a structured format so that really if you just did that and you understand SQL, there's a whole lot of value that you could derive from it. Second, for app developers who just want to build their own thing, we provide a structured, much more consistent than the prior version of Augur API so that you can get the data and pull it. And we, we have people who are using Augur just at the database level who are just writing their own queries. And then finally, the front end, I think the front end is what is accessible to most, I would say, ordinary people that are not on this call. And it's, it's important. And earlier this summer, uh, in mid-June, I made the decision to throw away our current front end instead of trying to maintain it for demos while oh, our, okay. our folks this summer built the, the new version. I just I didn't okay. want to distract developers. So we're, we're quite close to having something to show. Okay. Um, and I, I thought I would, but I just... I wasn't prepping for that until yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Maybe next time. No, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I think those, those are the, the things, certainly the rapid prototyping of getting data and having endpoints that you can use with a lot of useful parameters. I think we have, I think with the DoSox integration work that Matt Snell has done, we, he's really got us to the point where we can map those kinds of things back into into Augur API endpoints, which is one of the things our one of our Google Summer of Code students is working on right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I'll be, I guess I had a couple questions. One's actually for Grimoire Lab, but one of the things that'll be really interesting is now that the version one releases out, what is the most sensible way to aggregate these metrics? Right now, all of the metrics are clearly aggregated by the focus groups or by the working groups and then the focus areas, that's how the metrics teams have structured them. You know yeah, I mean? and on Augur, we've just, I've specifically kind of given the direction that we need to organize these things by the type of data they return and not the working yeah. group. So our API docs are gonna shift. Yeah, so I, I would imagine there's a, a shift, right, as you say, between these two. And I don't yeah. know, Grimoire Lab will be the same, that the organization is not necessarily the same organization as you know the working groups to focus areas to metrics no and on the consumer side we've seen it's difficult like we get we get emails where is this metric and i'm like oh that's in risk <laughs> right yeah. In, yeah. in our case what we are doing is to share this either with some specific context with the customer Okay. So like, okay, we are talking about performance or community, like some big areas, or the other way around is where the original data source comes from. So then you are focusing on okay. Git activity or GitHub issues or GitLab merge request, for instance. So depending okay. on who you talk to, and the, let's say that in this case, Grimoire Lab is uh, as flexible as depending on the requirements of the of the people, they can produce their own indexes or create, create aliases, which is a subset or a superset of other indexes, which is okay. the kind of things you can do for, for SQL as well. Um, then you have several data sources aggregated, so you can produce supersets of whatever. So it's more of a matter of, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, I think in my mind at some point, I had, <laughs> I had imagined that the, the work in the working groups, then the focus areas, then the metrics would map Kind of one to one to the software, but clearly that's not the case. that's not the well, case. Yet. I don't know. I mean, and I think I it's think okay, people, not. Can, people, you know, the way we think about developing them, I do think is different. That the end user has a set of things they're interested in, and they don't really care. I think 
what about that type, type of aggregation? From. Yeah. Well, I, I put in the notes just listening to the two of you talk that the metrics may be aggregated in the software based on customer or context specific issues. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. When you when we talked about these aggregated, I'm sorry, I was still thinking about where they were organized, but yeah, we talk about aggregated or integrated or synthetic metrics made up of multiple metrics. I do think that's the tools that are going to do that based on consumer need. When I was even thinking about representation too, like there may not be a utility in saying this is from the evolution working group in the software. Yeah. I, I don't think it's bad to have a flag. I just think it's confusing if we organize everything that way. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's like, a, think of it like a tag instead of a, a library of Congress code. Okay. And maybe this is yet to be determined as this, yeah. as this really starts to kind of stitch together now that we have the version release. Yeah. I used to work with a lot of librarians, so I have a, that was the metaphor there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they like everything in categories and I would be telling them, no, there are no categories here. It's just tags. And then their heads explode and we go <laughs> a glass of wine and everything's better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is good. Actually, we're butting up against the hour here. Um, I, one of the things I did want to talk about, but clearly we won't be able to talk about it now is kind of what our next steps are for the CAS project. So I'm going to table that until probably next week or maybe even the, next month. Yeah. W one thing you, we might send out on a list is to see if post chaos con for the people who will be there, if we okay. want to try to, I think it might be nice to have a organizing group debrief in a more structured or set manner than we have in the past. I think the last couple of chaos cons we've sort of dispersed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I think the one in, the one in Europe, we actually went out with a group of people and it was, I think really nice. To, to have a lot of the folks who are part of the day there to debrief on how it went. But I, I think, especially maybe not all 190 people that are gonna be there, but the, the people on this call and the people who are sort of part of the organization, I think, I mean, it would just be a great, great time if we can swing it to have a bunch of people get together there. Okay, great. Debrief on what we all learned. Okay. That might help kind of with planning and next steps. And take a photo. Last oh, time yeah. We yeah. Photo. yeah. It seems to be. <laughs> yeah. It has to occur. Okay. Um, well, everybody, thank you very much for the great conversation. Um, and I guess we'll see you around till next week. I very much appreciate everybody's time. Till next week. Thank you. See you all. Okay, thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Cheers.